Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 17th episode of the Two Left Feet Podcast. I am joined today by a wonderful guest. Um, He has a very difficult name to say. Um, and I'm probably going to say it wrong, um, Mr. Zhao. Yes, he was a wonderful guest. He's a Kizumba and Simba teacher um, from Portugal, currently living in Germany, Frankfurt, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this episode was, was really cool because, one, this guy is... Very passionate about it. <laughs> um, he we spoke a lot about the differences between Kizumba and urban kids. He said something that I had never really heard someone say before, which is that um, they are essentially two separate dances, and um, you know that kind of blew my mind because I always thought that. Uh, Urban Kids, you know, was an offshoot, was, you know, a baby of Kizumba. Um, But this episode was really cool. Um, If you're interested in Kizumba, you know, Simba, um, this is a great episode because he he drops a lot of knowledge, you know. um, Very great episode. I'm very appreciative that he took the time out of his day, you know, to speak with me. It was really, really amazing. Um, Check him out. On you know YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, because he has some amazing videos, amazing videos. He's a he's a really good teacher. Um, if if you find value in this in this episode, you know I want to ask that you leave a like and subscribe and share it with your friends and family. And um, if there is no value to you, if you find no value in this, then don't even worry about it. Um, so yeah, episode 17 of the Two Left Feet Podcast. I really hope you enjoy it. Hey, do me what favor. How do you say your name, sir? Jerome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, let's try it again. Jerome. Ah, uh, man. It's it's hard. It's a nasal say, sound. Say, say, say it one more time for me. Juan. Juan. No. Damn. <laughs> All right, hold on. So hey, hold on. What's your partner's name? Gedre. Okay, so you're okay. Jao, Joe, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> it's, All right. You All can right. call me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just start it out. Okay. So I am on the line with a Mr. Jao, who is a <laughs> Kizumba, Simba, and Tadashinya. You're a dancer. You're a teacher. You're a performer. And you're also a choreographer. You are currently living in Frankfurt, Germany. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, that is correct. But honestly, I'm not choreographing or doing shows anymore. I oh. think I'm 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 passing the age for that. Okay, I'm curious. What made you stop? You said you just to your age or what? Um, no, actually, it was uh, Gather had an injury on on her wrist. Oh, wow. Uh, mostly, um, uh, well, she, she was reacting bad to meat. Uh-huh. Okay. And, uh, that was swelling, uh, was creating inflammation on the wrist, swelling the, the wrist, and was painful. Uh, and in the meantime, it just passed. Uh, and our, I, I think that our, fortunately, on one at least one thing, <laughs> uh-huh. our our strong side is actually the teaching part. I don't, okay. I don't, don't really. S- I like to dance in in a free way. If you ask me to do a demo, it's one thing. But uh, I don't really see myself so much as a performer. And if when you take a look into colleagues of, of uh-huh. ours, 
Yeah. That they they have that stage thing in there in in, in them. Maybe if we would work more on it, we would we would get it as well. But it's not really something we took. We take a lot of pleasure doing. Okay, so in performing. In meantime, we yeah we 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 kind of stop it. Yeah. No, I understand that. I'm a you know I was actually I was actually born in Germany, sir. Really. I was born in Munich, in Eschenbach, the Orphids. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but Munich, Munich is Munich the capital? Am I mistaken in saying that? Or? Oh, you are. Capital, oh. capital is Berlin. <laughs> oh, man, I should know that. All right, shucks. Oh. <laughs> I think you shouldn't put this part online. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was, all right, well, I might edit this out. Tell me about Germany, though, man, because... I left when I was like a couple of months old, man. Can you tell me about it? I've I've never been back. Well, Germany, it's actually Germany is great. Oh. Um, Germany, it's it's very organized, uh, and there is something that uh, I had a feeling before we moved here because before I was living, we were living for about three and a half years in Stockholm, in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, and. The way I saw the, the, the scene developing there, uh, I felt that maybe it would be the right thing to just move on. And um, even though I initiated the, the, the Kizomba community that exists in, in Stockholm, yeah. Yeah, um, there was a point that I just felt, nah, I, this is, I think this is not going to go the way... I dream not, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, and people in Sweden, they like a lot of urban. And in, okay. in my humble opinion, urban is exactly the opposite of Kizomba. Well, uh, I want you to expand upon that. What do you mean? Um, many times people say it's, it's, um, it's a different style. But it's an me, offshoot of it, right? Or it's like, you know, it came from Kizomba, right? No, I, at, at listening, for example, to Curtis, which is one of the the creators, the mentors, if not the main mentor, uh, he actually said that he inspired himself more in Simba. And oh. I can see why when, when he says that. But the fact is that it, it's not, I'm not saying that eventually there was not a part of Kizomba that kind of give inspiration for the creation of urban keys uh-huh. but that doesn't make it a different style actually in 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 my opinion it's a complete different dance and it's okay you know it's 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 not, i don't i don't see it as oh now i see you man yeah okay i don't know what happened yeah. you can see me welcome. though yeah yeah welcome hey. <laughs> <laughs> um all right hold on. i don't want i don't want you to lose your place but i want to finish setting this up man hold on a second bro yeah, no problem. I like I, I like more that part of the bro than the sir, you know. All right. <laughs> oh, but I, 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 I understand. While while you while I don't see you, it's sir. Once I start seeing you, hey bro, how you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I'll be honest with you, uh, bro. You, I, I'm pretty sure you're older than me, sir. That's why I had to call you sir, man. Uh, it's, it sir makes me feel old, man. Okay, <laughs> I gotta ask you, how old are you, bro? I'm 37. I mean, I'm 27. So you're not that you, you're not that much you're older. 27. Than I'm 27. So you kid, man. Oh, uh, I mean you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not the grandpa, you. man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest with you. You're a kid. How how do you feel? Let's ask you that. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't think about it. I okay, just, yeah. I I don't I don't feel I'm old. I still don't have any kids. I, I feel I'm younger than actually I am. Okay. In terms when I compare with other people of my age, but um, I don't know. I just you know doesn't change anything. Yeah, I saw. Um, it's only a number, right? In one way, yeah. In another one, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you start feeling. You know, you you cannot endure. Uh, as long as you used to in the past with okay. sleepless nights and and partying like crazy, you know. You, sometimes I, I get to the end of a weekend in a festival and I'm completely dead no, because I, I have that. I have I have the leaving when the party is finished syndrome. 
that's my problem. <laughs> you stay all night. Yeah. I see. That's why I'm different. I might stay for a good 10, 15, maybe like an hour. If it's a Congress, you know, maybe an hour or two, man. But I don't stay to the end, man. Well, that's what I say. I have a party syndrome. <laughs> you do have a party syndrome. All right. I guess that is that just the. Are you German? Are you? Is that correct? No. Oh. I'm Portuguese. I'm so sorry, man. All right. Okay. Where, were you, where were you born at? I don't. I don't know. Lisbon. Okay. All right. Do you know um? Do you know a Ricardo Ferreira? Yeah. You do. All right. I just had him on the show. Okay. Yeah. Right. What about uh? What about a uh, Lucia Nogueira? Nogueira. Yeah, I know her too. All right. I just had her on the show as well. Yeah, that one I saw that you had. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, I do know you also know Miss Rakita Alto as well. Oh, many years too. Hey, she said she knew you before you started dancing. Well, we we actually met in the very beginning of my attempt to start dancing Kizomba. but that was okay. about the time that I actually met her. I was dancing more salsa at the time. Oh, I'm curious. Is that what you started with? Did you start with salsa? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sure enough. That's what I started with. I started dancing when I was 20 years old. How about yourself? Same. Yeah, the same? Yeah. Oh, I so you have, have, I just you have, have 10 more years on, on my Yeah, I would say you have... <laughs> You have 17 years of experience, man. That is amazing. Well, yeah, I can. It started for me at like 17 years ago when I started dancing. 17, 18, yeah. Well, uh, what got you into dancing? Actually, it was a, a friend. Uh, she knew I, I, I like to dance and I, I like to move and, and so on. She was like, "Hi, do you know want to go? You want to try a salsa class because we had one one class in our neighborhood." And I was like, "Yeah, why not?" And <laughs> I got damn addicted from the first moment. It okay, that's perfect. awesome. That's awesome, yeah. man. So you say you you grew up in Lisbon, right? Um, and did you did you like as soon as you took the class, did you want to go like full time with it? Were you going to school? Like, what was your what was your growing up like for you? No, when I start when I start dancing, I was the typical stupid kid that was like getting things really fast. Okay. And then you just feel like on the top of the world when you're pretty much in the bottom. <laughs> but <laughs> nice. that's that's how you just feel in that moment and 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 what I did is exactly what I tell people not to do these days. <laughs> I, well, please elaborate. I don't want to make that mistake myself. Because, you know, when, when, when I keep insisting with people that they should work on the basic, they should work on the basic. Oh, man. That's exactly what I, I did not do at the time, you know, because I was doing for, I was like three months learning. And every time there was someone new in that class, the teacher would start all over again. Okay. And, you know, you're young, you think you already know, and you get impatient. You get to that point, I'm just losing my time here, I'm paying for nothing, which actually I should have stayed. Right. <laughs> Looking back on it. Foundations are foundations. And, and, and now working on this, I can see how important it is. But as anybody else in the beginning, we don't see that. That's so true, man. Um, you, you get you get impatient and you want more, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm curious. Um, you're not the only person to say this that the basics are so important. Can you can you elaborate on why the basics and the foundation are so important? Well, the, the thing is, foundations. Let 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 let's let's use. It doesn't matter if it's if it's kizomba, if it's salsa, it could be anything, right? Yeah, it could be anything. The foundation is, is the base movement. And for you to, to be able to do the base movement, you need to really control the way you do it. Now, when we start doing things, even if we don't do it so well, we might have the perception that we are doing good, but we are not. Right. And because we feel frustrated with the amount of things that we know how to do we 
step to the superficial side, which are moves and steps and stuff like that. But what people don't realize is that if they master the way of a correct weight transfer, a way, a correct way of stepping, a correct way of leading, all of these elements that actually are the base of a good dance, because the foundation is the base of a good dance or of yeah. a good dance. Uh, if the if the base is good, then the probability of you having a good dance is higher. Oh, okay, so, okay. So when when you when you actually, if the more you work on, for example, let's say kizomba, the more you work on your walk, in perfection to, to perfect your walk, to perfect the, the 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 proper transfer of the weight in your feet, in the way you move, that will make all the rest come the rest that you're gonna do in terms of of, of moves whatever way easier okay because the what is many times there, there is this situation where people are discussing uh, beginners intermediate advanced for me this is just bullshit <laughs> why do you say that because it's bullshit and it's not bullshit because it's bullshit on the fact that people they they attach themselves to a naming to feel better in relation to another person. Right, exactly. You know, like for example, I'm an advanced and you are just an intermediate. Which which for me is com this for me is bullshit. Yeah? Because the it's not because someone is in some like in a group that is called advanced that means that person is advanced or intermediate or whatever. I, I believe it's more in the level of quality in the dancing that the person has and provides to the partner that will make the person a more advanced or intermediate or beginner. So if you, if you think of a beginner, beginner is someone that has feels strong limitations on what he can do. Yeah. An intermediate probably feels a little bit more comfortable, but it's still there is a, there is a lot of lacking on 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 the quality of what they are doing. In my perception, an advanced dancer is that one that already enters in the level of whatever he learns, he learns really fast because his foundations are at the point that allow him to not only understand the movement, but to be able to master the, the, the tricky part in, especially for example, is the, the weight transfer, where to position your weight, what to rotate, what to lead, where to press. That is for me more an advanced dancer. It's the one that you look at him and it looks nice when the person moves. You know, for me, everyone that moves mm, okay, it's, it's not there. So it's not the fact that you are in an advanced level class. That means you belong to that, to that group. And the fact is, this is my perception. The, um, the more advanced you are, the more down to earth you become. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you, get, you, you get to a point, you start giving a damn uh like if you're really going to impress the person you stop caring about that huh you saying you stop caring about that is that what you're saying yeah you because just, oh. you do you you do stop caring about the fact that if you're going to impress an advanced dancer is the one that search connection with the partner and the music okay yeah it's it's the one that really search to have a level of fun that is more intrinsic than external. Okay. You know, for example, um, it, it usually it's fun. Beginner and intermediate dancers, let's put it like this, you go to a festival and they want to do the whole class. All the classes that there, there is, they will, they will burn themselves doing all the classes possible. Okay. You know? Because they want to get as much as information as possible. Exactly. 
when you start, even if you start, even if you're on more advanced level, it's not um, depreciation for for what is being offered. You just become more selective. The same way you become more selective with the kind of music you listen to, with the kind of music you dance to, uh, and not so much about the partners. Naturally, you always look for someone that you feel that you're going to have the same kind of possibility of a higher connection. But is that person that, for example, if he's dancing with a beginner, he's not going to try to show all the moves he can do. He's going to always adapt to the person he's dancing with. Okay, I've heard that. I've heard that before. So, basically, for me, when it comes to all these namings, this is just namings that we have created uh, on one way in in a, in a pedagogical way and school ways to to create a, some differentiation as i say it's for classrooms right yeah let's exactly say like you said pedagogy you, you want you want to you want to kind of filter where people go right the problem is that people never or most of the people they don't filter themselves to know where they should go yeah. and they don't it, it's very hard if if you you have someone and then how you're going to approach that person to try to advise him to do this or to do that and even if they sometimes they are in a in a in an advanced group you still know that they need to work on the foundations so what i want to talk what i want to say about that is something very simple if people are not afraid of working in their foundations they will become faster and advanced dancer an advanced dancer, not about the quantity of moves they know, but the quality of dancing that they will give, they will have for themselves, and the level of connection that they will create with the music. Because a good foundation will make, will provoke a, a stronger and a more solid movement. Having a more solid movement, what I want to say with this is that you are in a higher control of yourself and consequently of your partner you have a more a higher awareness of what is going on you as a leader and what you can do what you cannot do then if you don't have a strong foundation if you don't have a strong foundation it's hard for you to feel the small things that can be adjusted in order to tune better with your partner okay I don't know if this makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I, I feel like what you're, a lot of people will say someone is advanced on how many patterns or how many tricks they, they can do, right? But yeah. what, you're, what you're saying is um, it's not the number of patterns or tricks, you know, it's the quality of your dances. And I, I really like that because I think that's what at least I aim for. I would much rather have, you know, five great dances, wonderful dances, then know all the tricks in the book and not even connect with my partner, if you understand me. Of course. The, the, the yeah. thing is, for example, if you see me dancing in the social, the changes that you will see in my dance when it comes to Kizomba depends on the music I'm listening to. And the music dictates everything, correct? Yeah. If I'm listening to a certain kind of ghetto zoo, I'm probably going to be dancing Tereshinge to it. If I'm going to listen to a proper Kizomba, I'm going to do Pasada. If I'm going to dance Semba, if I'm going to listen to a song that pulls the Semba out of me, I'm going to dance Semba to it. So the, 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 this is one of the, for me, the magical things when it comes to, to Kizomba, is that in, in a party, in a proper Kizomba party, you have a, a huge range of musical genres. Each musical genre gives you a different... Uh, information that different information that sonority will influence the body movement and the things that you are able to 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 do to perform in that musical gen so if you have a dj that is switching between genres from s short time to short time that is going to create a variation in in your dance it is not about the quantity of moves is not about if you dance faster or slower is how you move to the music uh, and for example if you think about kizomba you have ghetto zook which is the the, the the bigger or a lot of in a lot of parties this is what people play the most 
So uh, I just want to make sure I understand. Ghetto Zook is a genre of music, correct? Yeah. It's okay, ghetto. right. There, there, there is some crazy people that say that they are doing Ghetto Zook as a dance. I believe that because it's... <laughs> it's, just a, it's music. It's a type of music. Yeah. It's a type of music. And the thing is, in Ghetto Zook, uh, the, the, the Ghetto Zook is basically um, a mix between, let's say, hip-hop, R&B, with the, uh, well, a zook beat with the influence of hip hop and R and B. I so that, understand that, that. When you have a very strong beat, that's more the hip hop side. You, if you have a, a softer, a softer feeling on the music, usually that comes uh, the R and B feeling into the music. Okay. Um, but nevertheless, this kind of music because it, it has such a strong feeling. Send a strong beat. Usually, it's something that makes you want to stay more on the spot. It's not a kind of music that really is inviting you to 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 walk a lot. That's the opposite. Usually, thing that happens with the proper kizomba. If you listen to a proper kizomba, is not the kind of music that invites you to stay on the spot. It's the music that invites you to walk to do what we call pasada. I, yeah? I was going to ask you, pasada is to walk. Is that what that means? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And this is why Kizomba, it was n called Pasada in, in the past. Oh, because, I know that. Because it, it's, it's the fact that people are, it, they are stepping in order to, 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 to dance. And actually, Kizomba is a different way of interpreting Semba as a dance. Because, right, exactly. Because Semba, it's, it's let's say, it's, it's, Pardon. It's still Pasada, but the body flow is different from Kizomba. And that has to do with the way the instruments are played. The instruments in Kizomba, because of the influences that were coming from outside, especially from initially from Pompa and from Zouk, when the, 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 the Kizomba was created, actually was sounded very much as, as, a, as a, a proper Zouk song. Uh, some of the first songs... It's not that Compa Compa came as a as a as an influence from rhythms from uh, the the French Antilles, Martinique, Guadeloupe. Actually, Compa is from the AT. Uh -huh. uh, um, so when when these kind of rhythms start coming into to the Palop countries, because Kizomba comes from the Palop countries. Palop means uh, African countries where Portuguese is the official language. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So what happens is that they, they start influencing. Uh, and at the time, you have to think that there was no internet. There was no, no way of like fast communication. So each, each country start creating their own kind of Kizomba, even if it has a different name, based on the same influences. First, Kompa, and then comes, comes the, the Zook part, because Zook is also a daughter of, of, of Kompa as a, as a rhythm, right? Now, hold on, I, I, I want to make sure I understand that uh, because there are different types of Zook. I know there's Brazilian Zook. What Zook are you speaking of? Like the... I'm talking about Zook. For me, yeah. there is only one kind of Zook. <laughs> the Brazilian, now, let, let's put it like this Brazilian Zook, it's, uh, it's a wrong name appropriation. This is, basically oh. what it's, this is basically what it's happening with a lot with uh, with the kizomba and and the fights that happen between the urban scene and the kizomba scene is uh where the tarasha these days and the tarash is just wrong uh, name appropriation okay that it's happening and 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 when it comes to to the zook actually happens exactly the same thing so uh lambada and this was was, exactly. was actually shared to me by L Lamba Zook teachers, you know, yeah. Brazilian guys, and and, yeah. and they were they told they told me a short story, basically how it happened. Did this Lambada was seen as um, as a bad bad kind of music, has a, a bad connotation in in the society, right? So Lambada as as a, a musical genre has died, but what they did is that they took the Zouk music and they readapted the dance into the Zouk music. 
so what they do, they, 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 they still do this adaptation and the same way that in the meantime, uh, urban was created, there was created a lot of different styles, but the same way for me, it's not sometimes styles from what I see, it's literally a dance because, because if you think, for example, uh, LA, LA salsa or mambo, uh -huh. They they have the salsa name behind somehow. Mambo doesn't have uh, Mambo or New York style has it's their New York own style name. exactly. Yeah. They have their own their own name, but let's say it belongs somehow to the umbrella of salsa. But if you put someone that only learned Mambo dancing with someone that all their lives they only learned how to dance Cuban, they are not they, they are not able to dance with each other. They won't be so, right. So it, it, it's not a different style. People call it styles, but I don't personally. I don't think it's the right term. It's a different dance. I have my style. If you think, if you see, for example, uh, Afro Latin Connection, they have their style. If you see uh, someone like Pechu, he has the Angolan style, or Paulo and Lana. If you if you see like Miguel and Susana, they they have their own style. But the difference is. If our students meet each other, they can dance with each other. Yeah, we yeah. have. You can recognize the style of dance from the teacher. Oh, this person learned with that with this teacher. This person learned with that teacher. But if they dance together, they are able to dance with each other. It's the same what style. happens with with Kizoma and Urban is if you just learn Urban versus with someone that only dances Kizomba, they want to have a hard time dancing together. I had ladies dancing with me, and I could see literally, you know, if, if there was, was a, a, a something passing here, uh -huh. a, a, a board information, you know, like, <laughs> they would be saying, like, this guy doesn't know how to dance. This was basically oh. what, what their faces were, were saying. And I could understand why we were not able to, to match with each other. I, I, I want to ask you, I don't want to get you off topic, man, but... uh. I mean, so you're saying Urban and Kizumba are two different dances. That's what you're saying, though, correct? Oh, yeah. They are very, they are the, for me, they are the opposite of each other. Oh, my goodness. Because, I mean, I, I thought that Urban, you know, came from Kizumba. Look, think like this. Gravitational center. Urban, the gravitational center is high. In Kizomba, the gravitational center is grounded. Oh, Okay. We step by pushing the floor. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We stretch our leg to shift the weight. Yes, yes. Urban shifts, uh, sorry, stretches the leg, then you shift the weight. So the moment you send the weight, your leg is already stretched. In Kizomba, you stretch the leg to pass the weight from one foot to the other. In Kizomba, for example, you dance. Mo it's not that you cannot dance separate, but most of the dance you do it together. Right. Urban is not that you cannot dance together, but most of the dance you do it with distance. Okay. I, uh, I want to ask you. Oh. The frame in Kizomba is relaxed. Uh -huh. is shoulders down. Urban, you have a higher frame. You lead with the frame. We oh. lead with the torso. Most of the indication is given by the torso rotation, dissociations, and so on. Uh, the, 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 all the stepping, we step from down up. This is based with the stretching of the leg. We step from right, down right, right. up. Urban steps from up, down. Oh, so if you start, if you, and there is a lot of other details, but if you start naming them, uh, you, you realize that they end up being quite opposite from each other. Okay. And this is the reason why, for example, if I'm dancing with someone that, with a girl that only dances urban, for me it's a nightmare. And it's uh -huh. not that she doesn't know how to dance and, I, I, and, and, and thank God I, it's not, I, I don't know how to dance either. It's just that we are not compatible with each other. Yeah. It's the same thing as tuning a radio. It's like I'm broadcasting in 87 megahertz and she's broadcasting in 104 and 105. Yeah, okay. So, if, you, if we tune in into each other's frequency, then we can dance with each other. You can listen to each other. But if we are broadcasting in two different uh, frequencies, we cannot listen to each other. And this is basically what happens. Okay. I, I think, 
I thought I do Kizumba and, and Urban Kids, but um, I feel like from the outside looking in, you could easily mistake them. What do you think about that? Am I is that incorrect to someone who does not dance? I think that they could mistake Urban Kids for Kizumba. Oh, that happens all the time. And that, that's what I think it is. So I think that's what it is. Yeah. And actually, there is one one higher. Um, situation that happens with this which is the fact that um even though let's let's be frankly on it it's not that i don't believe there that exists more people dancing urban kids that there is people dancing kids only because when you when you state it like this you have to think about part of all the people that belongs to the polyp countries all the people that lives lives also in portugal uh, and all around the world that dance kizomba, and then you have the people from the urban keys. These people from the urban keys is a, a group of people that usually travel for festivals. They have their parties. It's very popular all over the world, and you have a, a higher number in this scene that we are part of. So the the the, the scene of the Europeans and people that go and learn how to dance, they go to the festivals. So in this area, I believe, in fact, that the, the urban kids became more popular than, than, than Kizomba itself. But there is still uh, more people in the world dancing Kizomba because of all the parallel scene of the Palop country. Okay. So, but in, n nevertheless, the thing is, let's put it that in this moment, Urban Kids is more popular than, than Kizomba, but there is still a lot of events that are called Kizomba Something Festival yeah. or Kizomba Party. And then you're going to check and the DJs are, or or 80% of the DJs are Urban Kids oriented. Okay. It's not that they cannot play Kizomba, but they are Urban Kids oriented. And and also to play kizomba, it's 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 an art the same way that it's it's an art to play urban keys. You know, it's um, I know that I cannot I DJ and I know that I cannot play the as good as someone that is focusing themselves in kizomba. Right. Sorry, in a, urban, in urban keys. keys. Uh -huh. The same way that if someone that is focusing themselves in urban keys, I know it's harder for them. In uh, well, there is exceptions, of course. But in a general basis, it's harder for them to know how to play uh, kizomba as it should be. So um, the same the same way, if if I don't invest my time into learning urban keys and how to master the way to dance urban keys, it's always going to be hard for me to to go and enjoy myself in an urban in urban keys party, you know. Um, but the only problem is that there is a lot of people that they don't know what is the difference between what. Right, and when they see the name Kizomba, they most probably they go for it, and uh, and they are being fed up, fed with not fed up, sorry, fed with 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 urban keys. Yeah, and only later on they realize, okay, I'm learning urban keys, so okay, I do urban keys, but but in in the meantime, there is a lot of misinformation being passed on. And this is actually the thing that people who are Kizomba lovers uh -huh. that fight against with. It's wanna... the wrong naming, the, 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 the word appropriation. And sometimes because just like Tarasha is, is a word that sounds cool, as I hear. So what happens is people start doing something that has nothing to do with Tarashinha or Tarasha or Tarash in the real the real the real basis and um but because the, the name is cool they decide to use it and if someone is learning for the first time or they never really heard or they don't know what is Tarashinya, they will if someone say ah no this is not Tarashinya, this is Tarash this is this is Tarash or whatever people just they just they just eat what what they listen they don't they don't really question and if you have someone that is a teacher uh saying that you're not really gonna question the teacher unless you have more knowledge you know yeah, and exactly. even if you have more knowledge like if you're gonna question another teacher in the middle of a workshop or of a class you yeah. become you you become rude 
yeah. so it, it's it, it's a really it's a really delicate thing because uh, you cannot try to help people understand that, for example, something is not right. Uh, and if you if if there is any kind of like, hey, sorry, but this is not right. This is not this. Then we are being called haters, and we are being okay. Saying, we are against this, and we are against that, and and you know there is a lot of negativity reversed because we just don't agree that the name is being wrongly used because actually uh tarasha and tarasha they are they are words that are depending on the context they are used and in depending on the context of the musical genres uh it, it's not really that it was it, it's a musical genre but let's say that, for example, a tarashu or a tarasha is in the musical part. It was to was kind of to describe a harder kind of tarashinha because the term inge or inu in Portuguese is to give a sweet connotation. For example, my name is João, right? But uh -huh. if people want to call me in a sweet way, they would say Joãozinho. Okay. You know? So uh, tarasha, tarashinha. You you see, so there is the, the it's it's just to give that sweet connotation, and actually, terrachinha comes from a Portuguese verb called terracha, and that yeah, is, isn't a screw. Yeah, to screw like a bolt, so that yeah that describes circular moves. Of course, you have exceptions in the dance, but most of the dance is on the spot, like a circle. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is basically waving waving circular moves. And this this is, uh, I believe, the reason why has this con this association with with, with the name Tarashini, and uh, and also we cannot we cannot forget that there is also cultural parts in behind everything. So um, let's say that Tarashini it's also a way to show to your partner your skills in in terms of movement. Yeah. So there, there is there is a dance part, and there is always as any other dancers, any other scene, there is always something more that right. can right. be done if you want to, and if yeah. your partner is in the same page or not. Exactly, because you can just perform the dance as a dance, or sometimes if you're into someone and the other person is into you, that is a kind of dance that can exponent more the situation between yeah. both people so uh but this is something that can happen with with salsa that can happen with bachata that can happen with any kind of dance any kind of scene any kind of place everything depends on what people are looking for what they want if they fancy each other but if you want to just keep it as a dance it's still just a dance mm -hmm. i understand that I, you dropped a lot of knowledge right there man um <laughs> I want to I want to talk about urban kids though. Um how did that start? I, am I mistaken? I believe that urban kids is a mix of like tango and kizumba or like no, how did that urban not kids enough? these days is hard to to define what is what because anyone bring their own influences. Okay. And 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 uh I'm not I'm not saying this about the people who created. I'm talking about the the regular scene what I what I see happening is that it is very simple. Initially, people say that urban kids is kids on the fusion. Okay. And uh, and fusion with this dance and with that dance and so on. Right, but right, right, right. The fact is is this: if you want to fuse something, you have to master something. One of the sides you have to master, if not both. Right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. let's say you want to do kizomba with something else. Uh, we, for example, Gede and I, we, we have a class called Kizomba with Tango Infants or Tango Fusion, or as the promoter want to call it. And every time we do this class, we alert people that this is the, the, the moment where Kizomba stops being Kizomba and becomes something else, because it's not Kizomba anymore. Exactly. You have the foundation, you have the way we step, the way we hold, the way we walk. So you have a lot of aspects that are based on the kizomba, but then you bring a complete uh, influence and a complete different 
inspiration, in this case, for example, let's say we based on tango moves that we adapt in order to be to to still be part of the 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 concept of being kizomba. For example, it has to be leadable. It's not something that is just choreographed. And you know that in tango there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of leadable things, but there is a lot of things that the guy is not leading and the lady just does because it's tiring, it's this, it's that. Um, in Kizomba, there is not real lady styling. There is jing, yeah. which is body movement with spicy feeling. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for the man, it's called banga, for for I was told. Yeah, so it's but jing is a word that is associated with the women's movement. Um, and in urban kids, you have style. You have a lot of ladies doing whatever they want, and the guy is not leading anything, and they're just doing. So when we do, for example, this fusion, we keep these elements of Kizomba alive. We keep the, the it has to be leadable. Or, of course, there is, a, like, this is a kind of move that you end up learning, but once you understand the concept, if you lead, it works. If you don't lead, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we do, we feel that we do master the Kizomba side, right? So I'm not doing uh, tango with Kizomba influence. I'm doing Kizomba as a bass dance with the tango influence. Okay. And, and what is happening these days is that there is a lot of people that they don't master anything and they just do their fusions and, and, and just fits into the, the urban kids side. Okay. So, uh, you have one teacher doing something, you have another teacher doing something completely different. And then in the end, sometimes not even people inside of the urban kids, they understand each other. Uh, while in Kizomba, as I said, if, if, if we put students from different teachers that actually teach Kizomba, they come together. Uh -huh. Because of the foundations, they are able to dance with each other easily. There is not much struggle to, to, to understand each other. And um, so these days, I think that urban kids is becoming harder and harder to to define what is what. Mm, okay, I understand that. I understand what you mean by that. But I'm not so, the best person to to talk about urban kids because I have my 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 knowledge mostly based on observation because I accompany all the development of this of this dance from the very beginning, even before it was called urban kids. Uh, even before being something close to urban kids, because before all this, what was called the French style was basically samba being dancing any kind of music. This is what was oh, happening yeah. with the French people. They were dancing samba, they were dancing samba tricks. They were doing a lot of tricks, a lot of stuff. Doesn't matter what kind of music it was passing. So as a beginning, it was kind of the same, the same principles of what was kind of happening with the urban kids. In the meantime, there was music that was redefined more into the fitting of urban keys. So if you see urban keys is the kind of music, the kind of dance that works a lot with pop music remixed with the Zook, with the Zook beat, uh, instrumentals create from bass, uh, what people call the sur, uh, the, what they call, uh, Tarasha and Tarashu is, is nothing to do with it. It's basically Mumbaton music. Um, and if you actually type Mumbaton on 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 YouTube, uh -huh. and you're gonna listen to a lot of music that you th you would perfectly fit into a, a urban kids party or music that okay. is so all that those hard beats they that kind of, a lot of that music is actually Mumbaton. So there there is there is a a, a a group of genres of music that actually fit the urban kids side. That, for example, for me as a dancer, they don't talk to me. That there is a, there, there is a lot of music that doesn't speak to me. The same way that there is a lot of music that speaks to me that doesn't speak to people that enjoy urban kids. Because when when you have the, as I, I was I told you before, you have a specific kind of sonority, and that specific kind of sonority influences a way of movement. And if you're not moving in a way that allows you to feel the music you're not going to enjoy the dance. Yeah, you're not going yeah, to enjoy yeah. the music. It's the same thing as, I always give this example in the classes, it's the same as mathematics. You have kids that love mathematics and you have kids that hate mathematics. The ones who love are the ones be who understand mathematics. 
yeah. the ones who usually say I hate mathematics is because they don't understand. They don't un- they don't understand how it works. It's so hard for them that becomes hate. So yeah. this is this is basically what is happening with the dance as well. So you have a group of music that it's easy to to listen, and the dance fits as a glove into that group of music. When it goes into the kizomba side, to the samba side, and it goes into some genres that they speak to the kizomba people. These genres they don't speak to the to the urban kids people. So what people call the traditional, it's it's basically I would say it's it's a kind of a frustration because it they don't really feel the music the same way I would feel frustrated to go just to an urban kiss party nothing to do it's there is nothing wrong with the urban kiss party there is nothing wrong with the music it's just what I dance yeah. doesn't allow me to feel and doesn't allow me to enjoy that kind of music and to to be able to be dancing with people and to make that people enjoy the dance with me so this is one of the reasons if you're in a mixed party, if I listen to Urban Kids, usually most probably I go for a drink, I social I go to socialize, <laughs> I go to talk with a friend. Even when the Kizomba comes, I go and dance Kizomba. And it's it's not that I don't like because if I play, I play Urban Kids as well, depending on the party where I am. I have right, to right, play right. for the people, I don't have to play for myself. Exactly. And and in the meantime, but that doesn't mean is the kind of music that really makes me enjoy myself. So it's normal that I avoid going to an urban kiss party. The same way I understand it's normal for people that like urban kiss to avoid going to a kizomba party. The only thing that I think is ironic is that many times people go to a kizomba party. Expect they are not having uh, the quantity of urban kiss that they want to, and they start being upset with the DJ. Because the DJ is not playing what they think to be kizomba, so uh, these are the, the the tricky things in the in the satiety at the moment. Yeah, I understand that. Um, I'm curious: is it, to my knowledge, uh, say someone who dances simba can dance kizomba, and they might be having easier time ta- easier time uh, learning or dancing urban kids? But vice versa, someone who dances urban kids is not going to be able to dance kizumba and is not going to be able to dance simba. Um, let, let's put it like this: if you if you learn how to dance simba as a modern dance, that is going to help improving your kizomba. Right, 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 right. Okay. If you learn how to dance kizomba, uh, usually if let's let's put it like. If you know how to dance Simba, the probability of you knowing how to dance Kizomba is very high. Right? Okay, sure enough. Not always the way, the way around, because the, there is a very specific way of, of moving in Simba that is based on the way, as I said before, the way the instruments are played, and especially conga, the guitars, and the way they sing. It gives a complete different flow to the music. That right. Is a complete different flow to the way you move. And there is a lot of people that they just beat their Kizomba, they move delayed to the samba, and uh, because they are not really dancing samba, they are dancing fast kizomba. They don't feel they don't feel the samba. They don't feel the music, and usually it is, these people have still a resistance to samba because fam- samba is a lot of fun. It's uh, a playful dance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you, if you learn or if you have a good and strong foundation in kizomba, and if you decide to learn urban keys. It's easier to learn urban keys than right. if you learn urban keys and then you go and you want to try to to to, to learn keys on, because what happens is is what I was telling you about the radio frequencies, as in kizomba you learn how to dance in the grounded way, that means what is what is the difference between having a a, a, a low gravitational center or a high gravitational center, is the tension of your body. In, in Kizomba, another difference between Kizomba and, and Semba, the majority of the dance is done with a relaxed body. In urban, the majority of the dance is done with a tense body. So, if your starting point is relaxed, the level of adapt- adaptation to, a, to a, tense, a tense body is very easy. So you, can, you can increase the, le- the, the, the tension of your body as you want, and always come back to the zero position. 
But if your zero position is here, you can go slightly up, but you always come back to your starting point. You don't go yeah. under that. So if you learn urban, your starting point is here. If you learn Kizombi, your starting point, it should be around here. So you can always adapt and you can always adapt the way you step. It's easier to learn how to keep the leg stiff than to really use the bending and the stretching of your knees in order to perform the dance. So I would say that urban keys, it's easier to learn. It's not that it doesn't have complicated moves. This, the same way that Kizomba has complicated moves as well. But I think it's easier to learn urban keys than Kizomba because for you to enjoy Kizomba, you really need to control your body in a way that gives you uh, what we call a genre flow or a, a movement that is very wavy. And, and, and the tendency of people having the, the capacity to control that level of relaxation in general, in terms of European people and, and around the world, it's harder. Let's put it like this. African African brothers, because for me they are brothers. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> African brothers, they grow up with a complete different culture. Mm, definitely. When it comes to music. They grow up there is much more dance and there is much more variety of music being incorporated in the visual simulation and and, and, and the kids than exist in the Occidental world let's put it like this european world for example i grew up listening to brazilian music i never really thought about it but i think it really helps me to have a certain kind of adaptation to the sonorities that i listen to yeah. um the same way that for example if you grow up with based on hip-hop music and so on you're going to have a tendency to go more into the urban keys because it's it's the kind of music that it really speaks easier to you because it resembles I what I say they're, more, they're similar, right? They're very similar, correct? Yeah. Exactly. I understand that. So you People will always go to what they associate themselves better yeah. with. Yeah. So if... But... When it comes, for example, to the to the African brothers, to the African culture, you have such a variety of music that is being input in your childhood. It, it's not just hip hop. It's a lot of different kinds of music. So all that input plus the input that there is a the, the, the natural thing of dancing in the African communities uh, makes the, the capacity in many cases to adapt to the movement higher than someone that only start dancing when they get to the 15, 16 years old and they go mm -hmm. to the club, listen okay. to the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you grow up your life without without dancing, and then when you're 15, 16, you go to punch, punch, punch. This is how you learn how to dance, and this is right. the situation you have. Everything, yeah. everything to those people are going to be quite limited because they don't they, from childhood they didn't have the the dancing stimulation and so on the same way you have european people that dance good as hell because from the very early times they learn how to dance okay take for example someone that that learned or did ballet all let, let's say one of yeah. one of these girls that do ballet all their lives, they they do uh, standard dancing and they do this and they do that. They go to to learn other dances and they catch it like this mm. because Maybe. their body, their mind is trained to movement. Right, it is. That makes sense. That makes hundred percent sense. And it's 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 uh, it's not because the the color of your skin that is going to define your capacity to learn. It's the inputs, the inputs, the stimulations you have since childhood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your uh, environment. That makes 100% sense. I want to, um, 
you you got a lot of knowledge, man. I want to talk about a. Uh, tell me about your <laughs> your crowded space challenge. Tell me about that. Crowded space challenge. Ah, uh, you mean the class that we that we is do? That a, is that a class of yours? Yeah, yeah, that's a workshop. The the it's it's not well. It yeah, I never thought about it. It's it's kind of a challenge. But basically, what happens is, um, people tend to to need a lot of space to dance because most of them they are just focused on doing movements. This is another difference between kizomba and urban kizomba. <laughs> Kizomba is a in kind of dance. Urban Kiz is an out kind of dance. So uh, when you're performing moves, you need it's a way of expressing yourself. Now, what is happening a lot of times is that you're not expressing to your partner. You're expressing to the crowd around you. Ah, you're not really connecting. Really like about Urban Kiz is the capacity of showing uh. all the things that they can do and to people... Like, oh my God, this is so cool. You dance so cool. Well, for me, it's more important that the person that dance with me feel like in the sky by dancing with me instead of being impressed with the quantity of moves that I know how to do. Okay, yeah. Because the level of connection I provided with the music, the fact that I, 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 I probably able to, to take the person kind of out of herself like to lose the person lose themselves into the dance and then this for me is what kizomba can create usually and a kind of a, a trance sometimes kind of moment yeah and um besides also the happiness and so on but the point is uh you need space to do it you need you need you need to have an area there where you can can perform right, right, right. The same way that if I'm dancing samba and if I have a lot of people, I'm not going to perform tricks. It, yeah, you don't have the space for it. It's asking for it because I will always analyze the amount of space I have. Yeah, you have to. But yes, your job as the lead. Space, I can go crazy if the music is allowing me to, right? But when it comes to kizomba, we can actually dance in a very small space and adapt our dance the part of the moves that we do in order to take as least space as possible. Yeah. So that help us to adapt to any kind of environment, any kind of uh, rotation of people that are in a party and still be able to enjoy ourselves without being shocking with everybody around us. You know, like, you know, that, that thing that you go on the, on the, um, on the thematic, parks you have those cars that people are going against each other oh, yeah, the bumper cars <laughs> i don't know the name in, in, but bumper in cars. yeah but you know you just you go uh, boom. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes dancing feels a little bit like that for us it's like avoid touching as much as possible anyone around us and many times you're dancing and someone you you're on your moment and suddenly someone really knocks <laughs> yeah, really strong because that person has no space notion. So this right. kind of class helps to um, develop not only the space notion that you must have around you, because there is a lot of movements that you can do, a lot of ways of doing things that provoke your rotation in order to be able to analyze what is going on around you, to avoid someone coming against you. There is a lot of things that can be done in a, in a while dancing that not only creates variation in the dance but also helps you being aware of what is happening around you to avoid being shocking with someone else yeah. and the more people there is the more capability you have to adapt your movement in order to be able to enjoy yourself without disturbing others or others eventually not disturbing you so that's basically the concept of that class yeah um I have some people who listen through podcasts who won't be seeing the video. So just um, for the people who listen on the podcast, uh, the Crowded Space Challenge is where you have uh, your students really in a circle around you, a very small circle. You just dance with your partner. Uh, no, that's 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 um, that's the end of the, the that's the end of the class. Basically, um, what we do is we create we bring everybody into a, like a small square rectangle. 
Oh, okay. Sometimes I use chairs. So I use what I have in 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 the, I get you. In the in the place that uh, that allows me to create like a very small dance floor. Okay, right, but right, right, right. That thing that you saw in the video is basically showing to people that I'm able to perform the the routine with all the elements that we taught them and still not touch them. Okay, 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 and okay. When people are getting into that kind of circle, they they actually <laughs> a lot of them they are afraid that we're going to step on them. And with them completely attached to each other, making a really small circle between them. We don't touch any of them. And yeah, okay. people are surprised because we do the whole thing without touching them. Yeah. Or even if it's a touch, it's a very soft touch. It's not like we step on someone, we go strong against someone. It's really, really controlled. And it's a, people don't believe that we can do the whole thing in such a small place. Okay. So this is just to be able to show them that it's possible. Yeah, okay. I want to ask you, um, when I say the word musicality, what does that mean to you? Musicality is awareness. Is being able to have enough knowledge to distinguish what is what, to have uh, enough knowledge to be able to adapt and uh, at the same time if you if you have a good musicality means that for example you're listening to the details in the music right. the small things and not the big things of the music the big things let's say it's the beat the beat for me is a background reference and musicality is when you are able to adapt your movement to the details of the music that makes a connection with the music higher and mm. and by that is not only like i listen to pdd and i did something like pdd it's it's the whole thing it's it's the sense of the music is like if you listen to a song you can listen the song can tell you if it's a happy song if it's a sad right. song Right, the song without you understanding the lyrics can give you still a message. Uh, uh, you get the message that the song is giving to you, and you dance to that message. You, you, you. It's like describing the song to your partner through what you feel. Yeah, yeah. And Definitely. the way you move, it brings that understanding to your partner. So when you are able to do that, your level of musicality is higher because. The man's job is to make the lady feel what they listen. Mm -hmm. it's, they can have their own interpretation because it's it's perfectly normal. I have my interpretation. The lady has their own interpretation. Magic happens when both of them have the same interpretation. So she is listening and she's interpreting. And I'm able, for example to through the movement to make her feel exactly the same interpretation she's having but as long as i make the lady feel the music through my movement through what i do then the musicality is there it's the capacity that you are able to talk to your partner through the music that you yeah listen. i definitely understand that i definitely understand that's um it's how it's you expressing yourself, right? Both parties expressing themselves, right? Yeah, but Definitely. musicality is, is something that uh, it's on the man's side as it's on the lady's side. So it's it's not something that it's only on, on one side. Right, on, right. And it's more our responsibility. No, I definitely I understand that. Um, I'm curious, for, for people who are just starting out with Kizomba, um, and I think I know the answer to this. P people who feel like beginners who feel like they're stuck in a rut, what advice would you give them? Be patient. Okay, be patient. I understand that. Because this is what I this is what exactly what I told you in the beginning. It's like is what I did not do. Is what <laughs> I, said, I think I know the answer. <laughs> because I didn't have anybody putting me in the right direction. 
everything that, for example, we teach in our classes, in our workshops, is based on the experience that we acquire along the time. Right. And it's, it's like, it took me this amount of time to learn this. Now I'm giving you everything compact in a nice. reasonable way in order for you to don't have to take as long as me. Yeah. So what is happening is that a lot of times people don't listen to their instructors. The tricky part is that either you have a good instructor or you don't have such a good instructor. Hey, you never that, know. That, is, that is a tricky part. Yeah. But as long as you have a good instructor, you should listen to their advices and don't take it like, oh, this person is just trying to to take my time or to take more money or to because you can I think it's easy to sense when someone is telling you something out of a good heart or just are uh, is interested in 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 the money part. We have never been money is important for us naturally because it's our way of living. Yeah. Or making a life. Let's this is the right exp right way of saying it. The same way that everybody that goes to a nine to five job, it's their way of making their life. So uh, the teaching, the, or the, the, the events organization, everything that we do related with the dance, our school, this is our job. And, uh, but money is not the, the main thing. It's a necessity because w the world is ruled by money in terms of what you can buy, what you can get, everything is ruled by money, but it's not everything. And and a, a good instructor will always look into the, the the what he can bring the best to to the person that is learning from him than the money. Money is a secondary, is a necessity, but it's a secondary thing. So whenever someone, my advice is to people like, if you have a good instructor, listen to what he has to say. Okay. If the person says you need to work on this, don't take it. As a, as a negative thing, like, oh, man, uh, this is this is not uh, what I expected. Think as it's an opportunity for you to improve. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have someone telling you or pointing you in the right direction, you're going to take longer to reach a higher goal. Yeah. So the, 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 more, the more help you receive, the faster you develop. The more open you are to positive and constructive feedback the more you're going to develop yeah okay. so when it comes to a beginner is like don't rush take your time take your time i understand that um and what about the next level for i you right i've already answered this as well um for intermediates that want to become advanced what does it take for them to take that next level? I, I know you hate titles but for people who just want to who are past the level of beginner and want to get to that next level what does it take for them to make that leap more patience <laughs> okay you know as i said before when it comes to to intermediate advance this is just it's bullshit it's bullshit yeah. <laughs> i understand it, it. it you can be an intermediate person an intermediate dancer in a class let's say you're in an, in an intermediate group and eventually you make you have women loving to dance with you way more than the guy next to you that belongs to the advanced class okay so it, it's not it's not about where you stand is where you go mm. I understand where, you, that. where you're going to take the person you're going to dance with what is the journey you're going to provide to right them? right right that is the difference that is going to make between a good dancer and a not so good dancer. It's not the fact that the person is an intermediate or advanced. This, for me, again, is bullshit. I understand. <laughs> when it comes I'll... to festivals, all right. Let, let, let's let's be a little bit realistic. When it comes to festivals, it's important to have to try to understand what kind of level you are. Nevertheless, you shouldn't rule yourself by the level that you have or you think you have. You have to rule yourself by, am I going to be able to do this class or not? First question. And, if, and, and, and second is, which class 
is going to give me the most from let's say these two or three or four options that i have on the same right market. right yeah so every my advice is take as many technical classes you can if you have good teachers for musicality even if you're listening to the same teacher eventually you're going to have the same class do it okay because it's the same thing do doing good classes with good teachers and doing them again is the same thing as watching a good movie when you watch a good movie you see the movie two three four times <laughs> you're always going to find something you didn't yeah. realize the previous time that you saw the movie and you're going to be like oh i didn't realize this part and that is going to give you a more fulfilling experience about the movie because maybe that is going to make you understand all the things that are going to happen after okay. so that is exactly as anything else in life it's okay to do it again it's good to do it again you just have to whenever you have the chance to have a good teacher around go for it take advantage and a good teacher is not the one that is only going to teach you the more fancy routines is the one that is going to challenge yourself to become a better dancer. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because routines, I'll... you can learn anywhere. Right, so true, how does yeah. yeah. But the problem is, if you learn how to do a routine without the right foundations, without the right knowledge to lead, etc. If you dance with someone that never did that routine, right, you're be able to do it exactly right but if you have strong foundations strong knowledge on how to lead or the best you have you're going to try something that you learned in the meantime with someone that never tried mm -hmm. the probability of you making that person do it is much higher yeah no, that makes sense that makes a lot of sense i want to ask you um what is one piece of advice that you can give to make anyone a better dancer immediately. <laughs> I cannot do twice. <laughs> is nothing for that one? No, there is there is no advice that can make someone uh, a better dancer immediately. It's look, can you be a doctor, a good doctor immediately? Can you be a good pilot immediately? Okay. No. You, there is there is nothing that you can become really good immediately. Mm -hmm. Someone can might make you think that you are good immediately, but you will never be good immediately. Each person takes their own time to develop. Yeah. There is a person that will take longer. There will a person that will take less time. Everything depends in which area. Everything depends on how much previous information previous time invested the person had in something that eventually is similar that will help him to do faster something you know it's like you take a degree right so you do a bunch of lectures uh -huh. and then you're going to take a second degree that half of those lectures you already did so you're going to do the ones that you didn't do and you take a second degree but if you're going to do a complete different degree, you're going to have to start over right from the zero. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same thing. When it, comes, when it comes to the dance, you need to give time. You need to invest time. If you want to become a really good dancer, the first advice I can do or I can give is listen to a lot of music, but good one. <laughs> because you have a lot of shitty music. You know, it's like, no, it, it, it's true think you have good music is harder to understand easy music is easy to understand yeah. is like fast food fast food will fill you up for a very short time yeah it just gives you that rush it just makes you like okay i was hungry i needed to eat something i ate something but you're going to be hungry very fast again yeah but exactly it doesn't have the quality that your body that needs. Substance, that substance. Exactly. But if you're going to eat to a good meal, prepared at home properly, that takes its time to do, you know, 
and then it's like with good quality uh, food, then you're going to be without hunger for a longer time. It's the same thing with music. If you listen to a kind of music that it, it had really a lot of effort to put yeah. together, yeah. you're going to have a lot of information, a lot of details. And the more you listen about that music, the more you're going to discover things, you're going to discover your musical, uh, you're going to develop your musicality because you, you're going to listen to things, you're going to start embracing something that it's not very basic, you know? It's not that there is not good music that is created in a, a short period of time or just created on a computer. It's not that. But it has to have a difference. If you have a, if you have a singer that invested uh, a few thousands of euros or dollars because he has besides all the writing, but he has this this musician recording this instrument. You have the other musician recording the other instrument. There is time. There is uh, there is a lot of preparation just to make that song. It takes two two months sometimes to make the song to be ready that result is going to be much more tasteful than something that was created in two hours. I, I definitely understand that. I definitely it's, do. It's the same thing. So it's about the time you can invest in stuff. That yeah. Be better or worse. Okay, now that makes sense. Um, I'm honest with you, man. You, you dropped a, knowledge, a lot of information in this conversation, man. I want to I wanna thank you for taking the time to talk to me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. My pleasure. I want to ask you. Um, tell me some of uh, what are some of the upcoming events you have going on? Uh, the next one is the Varsal Pizomba Festival. Okay, that's on, that's on April fifth, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That is. That is the. I, I'm sorry to all the festivals that invite us. I mean, no, no, no. Um. No depreciation for for the invitations. I really appreciate every place I go to work at, but this is the only festival I would pay my own money to go there. Oh yeah, oh, that's awesome. It's the yeah the other ones I organize by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's the only one that I feel it has the same or very similar vibe to. There are, there are a few festivals that I, I know or I keep hearing they are very good. I never went, so I cannot really talk about okay. that. Yeah, I understand. But from the ones that I have experience about going to, this is the one I would, even if we are not invited to be teaching there, we would go anyway. Because okay. it's, it's a family, literally kind of family gathering every year. The level of dancing is very high the quality of the classes are in general very good because the the organizer really invests in having a core group of teachers that uh, go there for many years and as any any teacher we are or i think it's important no no teacher to stop in time if you see videos from me for two three four years ago you will see differences in in the way we dance and i'm talking just okay you will see difference if you attend classes. You would see difference in the way we teach. In the way we teach, because it's about keep developing yourself. We keep learning every day. We keep learning with every people that we we teach. I learn sometimes even more from other people that we teach than people learn from us. Okay. Because what I learned from them is more valuable than all the information I'm giving to them. Because yeah, a lot of these people. They just make us much more effective, much more aware of how to deliver the information in a more uh, precise, effective way that it's easier for people to understand. And that is something that for us is priceless. Okay, I understand. Yeah, that's that awesome. Man. Festival to go. Um, I'll... You should go at least next year. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind, but definitely. And uh, besides that, I also organize a festival called Toma Toma in uh, Bratislava, Slovakia, uh, from the 11th to the 15th of July with uh, my best friend, 
Uh, his name is DJ Superman. That guy can also give you a lot of good information. He also teaches. Very good teacher as well. Um, then we have the Like Festival in um, in September in Lisbon. The our big boy. Uh, it's gonna go for the 10th anniversary. Okay. And we're gonna have the Friday and Saturday. We're gonna have concert with live band with uh, Do uh, Livong on Friday, and Don Kikas on on Saturday. That sounds awesome. These names, these names, to probably when I when I say these names, if people listen to them, they will be like, uh huh. Like they, it's normal that they don't they don't know. The people that usually come to the event, they know who they are. Okay. Uh, well, Livong, it's easy. You, I'm sure you heard. Oh Maria, Maria, oh Maria, Maria. Mm, I think I might have. Na, 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 na. Oh Maria, Maria. So if you listen to Maria do Castelo, you're gonna know the song. It's, okay, okay, okay. It's really passed in a lot of parties. A lot of people know. Okay. So, uh, may. We brought him to our school. We said, you know, we live on nah. And we play the music. Do you know this music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So people usually you know they know okay. the music, but they don't know who are the artists. And this is also a way for people to connect with the ones who do the music. And we understand because if you don't speak the language, it's not so easy to exactly to yeah. know who is singing this and who is singing that. You recognize because the DJ plays in the parties, but from that point to know the name of the song. Sometimes even to go to then to go to know who is a singer and to have a visual idea yeah. of who is a singer, it goes a, a big road to 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 walk. Oh, it is, you're right. Um, but and the other festival we have, it's uh, also it's here in Frankfurt, 29, 30 of November, one of December. And uh, if everything goes well, next year already we will have the like London in uh, in February. Okay, that's awesome, man. They got a lot going on. Uh, I'm curious, how can uh, how can people get in contact with you, sir? I told you not to call me, sir, man. Oh, my fault, my fault, <laughs> <laughs> my fault, bro. Uh, it's, it's it's easy. Facebook, you can find me on on Instagram with uh, with my name, João and Rocha at uh, well, João Rocha eighty one. Okay. So for those who 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 missed my age, now you know. <laughs> Um, Facebook, yeah, I, have, I have two profiles. One is Jean Rocha, which is full, and then I have Jean and Rocha, which is the second one. Uh, we have also the page Gather and Jean Kizomba Samba Teachers, the live festival pages, the Kizomba Fabric school page. There is a lot of ways to get in contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Um, what I'm gonna do is when I when I post this officially, I'm gonna make sure I have all your links below. So I got you. Yeah, I will, <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. I can give you all. You're gonna have a, a strong list. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. I want people to be like getting kind with you. Um, like I said, man, I really appreciate you taking time out today to talk to me, man. I really do. You had you have so much information, so much knowledge and experience, man. It's amazing. I hope I didn't take too long to. To talk about a few stuff because sometimes I lose my I, I I lose myself on that, and uh, I, I I hope I don't get anyone like bored. Okay, no, no, nah, man. Um, you know so much, so you know it, it's I can't complain, man. I appreciate that. that 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 knowledge needs to be passed on, you know. I I hope so. Yeah, For no, me, definitely. It was a pleasure yeah. to talk with you, and anytime, feel free. Oh, I really appreciate that, man. I want to ask that you uh, enjoy your rest of the day, man. Sorry? I said I, I said thank you, man. I said I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. My day is finished. That's why I didn't oh. understand what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. It's, it's midnight there, right? What time is it? It's one fifteen. In the morning, right? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, go to bed, man. I know you're tired. Nah, I'm, I'm a night bird. I will go okay. to bed around three or four. But wow. I know that I talk a lot. That's why I told you we have to do this before when I get home from classes. Because <laughs> if we're gonna do this one hour later, then then it's gonna take you. Okay, long. okay, okay. I get you. I get you, man. No, I appreciate, it, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Nah, no, thank you. I I hope you enjoyed, and I hope your listeners will enjoy as well. Oh, they will. Um, anytime, if you have any doubt, you know, knowledge is is to share. So just ask. Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. 
All right. Have a good All night. Right. You as well, sir. All right, bro. You as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right.